Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to this uh, match from the Pegasus Cup. Um, I have no idea uh, which round this is. I think it's early in the Swiss. And in this battle we're going to see uh, Composition A going up against the Erna Burnham that we saw from the previous video uh, just before where he faced um, Aborea. I played against uh, this particular archetype and this particular player uh, a couple of times before. We usually meet up somewhere in the top eight uh, when, uh, whenever we manage uh, to get there. And um, But this, this match is a bit different because uh, he has tweaked his deck a bit. He's put in the Shivan Dragon and uh, I think it was a Killer Bee. Uh, and he has taken out uh, a bunch of, uh, or a couple of his ice storms. And the composition A uh, is tweaked as well because we're going at the Pegasus Cup tournament. And this particular tournament, as I mentioned previously, it has some subcategories uh, that you can win. Uh, if you do the first kill uh, with a Pegasus of the entire tournament, uh, you win a beta Pegasus. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, the honor of doing that. And if you um, you also win a beta Pegasus if you do the most damage across the entire tournament with Meta Pegasi. Um, and I think that's about it for the sub tournaments. And I adore those kind of sub categories. Uh, when we played at the Dominia Day that's on this channel, I uh, made a whole new brew, the Monogreen brew, brew, just to participate in as many sub categories as I could manage. Uh, so it's the same here. I put in four Mesa Pegasi and I think what I took out, uh, we see the uh, deck here. Um, what I took out is a Lightning Bolt, a Source of Plowshare, a Hypnotic Spectre, and um, I think the last one was perhaps a Sinkhole. I'm not so sure about that, but something to that effect. So the Composition A will have a, list, a bit less uh, creature removal and more acro elements to it. Uh, the rules for the Meta Pegasus has changed slightly in this tournament in that it can be casted with two colorless mana, so it makes sense to put it in the composition A, and I won't um, have too much white in it uh, for the mana base to uh, to function properly. So yeah, that's the uh, the background of this game. It's two very very aggressive decks, so I expect. Uh, to see a lot of fireworks and a lot of creature battles here, like two bloodthirsty Dobermans going up against each other. So that's, it's going to be action-packed, I think. Uh, and it will probably be, uh, no matter which way it goes, it will probably be some pretty quick games because both decks are just so very, very aggressive, uh, foregoing much of uh, the defensive strategies of the game just to uh, do a bunch of damage early. In this regard, I think the Urnum Burnham uh, will have a faster mana curve than the Composition A, so will likely dominate the very early game, but pretty early on, both decks will have deployed their troops and yeah, all mayhem will ensue, most likely. So we'll brace for impact and go to the first round. And with me on the left here on composition A, and I think I'm on the play. Yeah, Badlands, slow and steady start here. Okay, starting off with trying to hold him back. It, it will be diff. Oh, and he bolts me. It will be difficult to uh, mana screw a deck with such a low mana curve as his. But Tiger is a great dual lane to try to crag early, just to keep him out him out of uh, his red mana sources, which might uh, hinder his ability to remove stuff in the early game. And also, uh, you get the green mana to boot, so that he can't play his mana ramp uh, with the elves. So it's a uh, chance to take. And he gets the green mana and some Agonian Pixies right there, passing the turn. Okay, so it's very ag a very aggressive move, but he has a lot of critters there, and I suppose I want to try and dominate the early game here. Just soft to plowshing that Pixie straight out and coming over with the horsey. Let's do some gin. Probably figured it, he has so little mana that um, it was worth it. Uh, he wouldn't get an Urnum Gin out. But a lot of critters, he doesn't need that much mana, and he can play an Urnum Gin next turn if he wants to. Starting to take damage from the Juicem Gin, that's uh, 
pretty dangerous card against him here. So it's a bit of a dilemma here. Uh, I can attack him, but if he lets it in and then counterattacks, he can actually, if he has another green mana giant growth and berserk, that could ape and that's curtain call. But I take a chance. I can't stay back with the Jusum Jin. Uh, I said it would damage me too much. Cracking his factory. I could have cracked his forest there as well, but I suppose I wanted to get rid of another creature. Okay, now he can. Uh, giant growth and berserk if he wants to. Though I might have something in my hand. Okay, coming over with the elf. And only the elf. Okay, a single point of damage. And I take another point of damage from Dusum Jin at nine points of life here. I need to close the game fast. The longer this game takes, the more burn he'll draw into. Here we come. Blocks with the Code Ape. Giant Growth, thus becoming a, a huge creature, but I source the Plowshare at him. Just waiting with that source of Plowshare for him to uh, use his Giant Growth. Then he berserks my Dusum Jin. <laughs> just to get rid of it. So the Jusum Jin does 10 points of damage and he gains 2 life from the Kurde because I played before Giant Growth takes effect. So before it becomes um, a 5 6 creature. So if I haven't sourced the Plowshare, it, it would actually have killed the Jusum Jin without dying itself. So I'm without a Jusum Jin, he's without his Kurde, he has taken up a huge amount of damage here. But now <laughs> all that's left is a horsey against an elf. And he has the burn in his hand. So we're just trading blows here. Another horsey coming out. And I imagine I'll just block with it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, giant growth said at least it gets rid of a giant growth. Um, so <laughs> need to need him to use those because if he draws into a berserk again, um, that might be very, very dangerous. So just attacking with the horsey and putting out a hypnotic spectra here. So. I can block his uh, elf all day. It might draw a bolt, but no, okay. But I'm okay with that as well because uh, then he can't bolt me. <laughs> it's really just a race here. Okay, coming over with everything. Okay, that's game. He didn't have a, a way to uh, get rid of the hypnotic spectra. So, yeah, <laughs> very close call. The, both decks just grinding each other out uh, here. But composition A took the first one. One to zero here. Uh, so we'll let a sideboard here and then go straight to the second game and I'll imagine I'll put in some sushis and blue blasts against blood moons perhaps get the juicems out maybe oh yeah <laughs> I won a better pegasus at this point uh, it was the first that must make this the second round of the pegasus cup actually uh, I, I won uh, the subcategory of making the first kill with the pegasus here I had a buy in the first round, so this is actually my first game of the tournament then. So yeah, one beta Pegasus in the deck. <laughs> I think there's two in the deck now because I had one uh, already. So round two, he's on the play, starting off with a factory here. It will be curious to see if he can uh, dominate the early game in this this round. Uh, in the first game, I I seem to have... Uh, a more lucky start. Okay, <laughs> Library of Alexandria turn one. He needs an ice storm or something here. Okay, go then Pixies turn two. What is that? An underground sea? And a mox jet as a glare there. So I'll put something in after I've commented on the game and I do some gen. Okay. He attacks and I'll let it in here. It probably has a giant growth at this point, and I suppose I'd rather take it on the chin and then counter attack. Or he could have a bolt, something like that. Okay, he has a code aid though. It's a lot of six points of damage and the seventh point of damage from a juice gin if I let it all in, but I attack. Okay, he chooses to block. I'm, I, I guess I must have some removal in hand here. I'm not really using the Library of Alexandria here, just uh, I, I can't afford it. I'm just piling on the pressure because I know if I give him an inch he'll explode okay he blocks and lightning balls to do some gin so I've kept them in I, I think I put sushis on top of the do some gins actually just making my game uh, way more acro oriented just trying to duke it out with them 
an attempt to meet him head on here, just roll the dice uh, and see if I can out aggro him. Uh, okay, mind twisting here. For four cards. Ah, oh, a lot of burn. Let's see. Oh yeah, and the wheel and a killer bee. The wheel is really brutal to get uh, because he could have wheeled now. Okay, but he kept a warning dervish. He must have sideboarded that in. That's excellent for him because now he can hold that Deusim Jin back and he'll do damage to me. Uh, the Whirling Dervish has protection from black. Excellent counter creature against my Deusim Jins. So I need a Bolt or a Source to Plowshare here. I'm just like having an another dreams against me or something like that. Slowly dying to that Deusim Jin. Okay, going <laughs> really high risk here. Two Deusim Jins. At least I can get in with one. Well, I'm taking two points of damage each turn now. If he drew into another Whirling Dervish, I'd be so screwed. Okay, but maybe not. I have a Source to Plowshare, actually. That's why I did it. So now I can... Hmm, just get in with everything. Tries to jump block one of them. I disenchant his... Fetri, that's 12 points of damage right there. Wow. Huge punch. Another Nessa Pegasi. A Pegasus on the hand. City of Brass. So yeah, Composition A locked out in, the, um, in this game. Uh, really just exploded. So uh, we have a bonus game here. I think uh, we had time to, uh, to do it. So uh, we'll just try for another one uh, with um, the usual sideboard in here and he's on the play. Starting off with a Lenoir Elf. Okay, first blood to Erna Burnham. <laughs> okay, Mesa Pegasus coming at ya. Can block that elf and I'm okay with that even though I'm more expensive. Uh, because it removes one of his uh, mana sources. And he giant grows it, so that's one dead horse. And then follows up with an Agodian Pixie, so yeah, he's well ahead at this point as his deck is designed to be. That's a vicious glare, it's a city of brass. Those are actually quite dangerous for me. I play with a lot of them and uh, they can be rather brutal. Okay, balancing here. Uh, they can be rather brutal against uh, a burn uh, acro deck like this because they do damage to me. But that balance was uh, very, very nice. Need to discard a couple of cards here, a factory and something I can't see. But it at least puts the brake on him a tiny bit. There's a factory coming out of him. Strip mine. Not playing it. Getting a mind twist and he just bolts me as a response. And there's a mace of ith and a shatter in his hand. So he must have anticipated that I put in the sushi uh, since he's taking in the shadows like that. Okay, so the initiative is on him now. Again, he starts to poke me with that factory. I need to get rid of it. I'm at nine points of life. It's the danger zone here already. Hypnotic Spectra coming out. He's without a hand, so this is a very, very uh, lucky uh, draw if I drew into that, because uh, if he can't play his card, uh, I can just uh, remove it from his hand. Following up with another horsey. I like those Mesa Pegasi in the deck, actually. Okay, Pendlehaven, he drops it immediately because he knows uh, the Spectra will just take it away. Black Notes is not the best draw here, but He's under 11 points of life, taking 3 points of damage each turn. Okay, Synchro in the Pendle Heaven. I probably did that because I didn't want a script Sprite. I think it's a bit premature. You can, you can play, okay, he had a giant growth, uh, taking that away. Because he could play a Mace of Ith or something like that. Um, better to wait with that sinkhole probably. So his turn again, he needs something here bolt or something shattering yeah the black lotus doesn't matter 10 points now is time walking <laughs> and then closing the game with that uh yeah so that's uh, another victory for composition a in this second round i guess of the uh, pegasus cup against the urn and burnham and i did win that uh prize for having the first kill with the mesa pegasi and i'm 
counting up all the damage I'm doing with those Mr. Pegasus as I'm trying to win the subcategory of doing the most damage overall. And everyone in the tournament with Mr. Pegasi in their deck will um, keep track of how much damage they do with it. Okay, this is what I saw about it out. All the dreams and the time twister. I think this was a bit of a, a experiment. This is what he took. Two wooden dervish in, two mazes of ith in, put the Shivan dragon out, a mountain out. It took an ice storm out. I'm not sure about that. He might need it against the library. Uh, sushi's in. and The reason I took the Underworld Dreams out is because they're pretty uh, slow to play for me because they require three black mana and they don't have much... Uh, they, they, they don't work well as defenders uh, against all the creatures and burn and he doesn't have much of a draw engine. So um, yeah, he will just try to win with his opening hand. There's the Wheel of Fortune, but that's it. It can block the Sylvan Library as well, I suppose. But still, I wanted to get Time Twister and the uh, Unknown Dreams out to put more creatures in and uh, Blue Blasts against the uh, Blood Moons, perhaps a disc as well. Um, yeah, I think that was about it. The reason I, I picked uh, uh, the Time Twister to be removed over Wheel of Fortune was because he'll, he could sideboard in Red Blasts against me. So that was the thought process behind it. Uh, thank you for watching this game and uh, we'll follow up with even more games from the Swiss here. Bye bye.